Old Bard Show. Lowell Green taking off the gloves, setting fire to political correctness, and telling it the way he sees it. It's 30 minutes of wit, wisdom, and hellfire. Your calls are welcome at 613-413-2217 or email info at lgreen.ca. Now, here is Lowell Green. Uh, thank you, John. Well, well, well. Finally, finally, finally. Better late than never, I guess. Some action towards establishing a national vaccine program. Major General Danny Fortin, Chief of Staff to Canadian Joint Operations Command and former commander of a NATO mission to Iraq, will head up the vaccination distribution system in Canada. I don't know Major General Danny Fortin. I hope that he's as competent particularly when it comes to logistics, as is, I know, Rick Hillier. But unfortunately, and by the way, I just want to alert you that, yes, I'm going to very shortly, I'm going to get into this whole crazy business in Etobicoke, the great barbecue arrest today, Adamson barbecue arrest. I've got a few words to say about that. But in the meantime, I just, I, once again, I just have to draw your attention to a few things here concerning vaccines, all right? There is still mass confusion concerning when the vaccines will arrive in Canada, how many will arrive, what kind will arrive. That's very important. We need to know. I mean, some of the vaccines require minus 70, other re require minus 20. So we've got to know in order to order the freezers, for God's sake, which ones we're getting. We still don't know. Uh, who will be the first to receive the vaccines? All of those things and many, many others. Prime Minister has done very little, if anything, to clear up any of these questions. Now, one of the things that was cleared up, has been cleared up today, it just confirmed. We knew this, I guess, a couple of days ago, but it's been confirmed. It's hard to get anything confirmed from this government, believe me, is that we only will have 6 million vaccines, doses, by probably the end of March. We hope. Now, and, that, uh, and I've said this before, you know this, that everybody is to get two shots, which means that by the, um, by the end of March, three months' time, we will have about three million people vaccinated, if we are lucky. Now, the, um, the government, Trudeau, is trying to do some damage control here, and they're talking this up. Oh, this is great. We're going to have people inoculated by the end of March. I just want to point something out, okay? In the United States, they are very sure, and they have the plans already in place, to get this, please, inoculate 10 million people every week. Let me repeat that. You may poo-poo it. They have the logistics in place to do it. In the United States, they plan and say that they will inoculate 10 million million people every week starting the second week in December in about 10 days time they figure they in fact they they are saying that by the end of December 20 million Americans will have been vaccinated which means that if 20 million people were vaccinated by the end of December in Canada we would have about two-thirds of our citizens inoculated and could return or very close to returning to normal life. Our senior citizens would all be inoculated. All of our frontline workers, all of our healthcare workers would all be inoculated. Everybody over the age of 80, everybody with any sort of underlying health issues would all be inoculated. More or less, we could return to normal by the end of December, by the end of next month. If we were as organized and had planned as well as the United States of America. Now, there's a lot of people, and I understand why I don't like, didn't like, Donald Trump. But this happened under the Trump administration. It's called warp speed. It was introduced by Trump. Could be the, the only positive, well, I, I can't say that, but it's one of the positive things that has come out of his administration. Warp speed. 10 million inoculations every week. Now, 
contrast that with the situation that we have come to understand here in Canada, and that is by the end of March, we may be lucky to have 3 million people inoculated. Now they are telling us that it probably will not be until the end of September until the majority, in other words, 51% of Canadians are inoculated. In the meantime, in Canada, we are going to have deaths, continued deaths in long-term care. We are going to continue to have lockdowns, et cetera, et cetera, and all that implies, and pouring billions more of money we don't have into it. Because we're not as well organized as they are in the United States. So I, I, I'm getting emails from people say, oh, well, it's probably just as well. Will you please give your head a shake? If you want to return to normal or near normal, if you want to make sure that our seniors in long-term care, that, that they can live a normal life, have visitors, go out, attend Christmas parties, then for God, if you don't want a vaccine, that's up to you, I guess. But for God's sake, you should do everything in your power to make sure that our, at the very least, that our seniors have a vaccine and can be protected. If you support in any way this incompetence that is occurring with our government now, then there's something wrong. i sorry to say it, but there is something freaking wrong with you. This is the light at the end of the tunnel. You don't like vaccines? Okay. Then, <laughs> you know, you're ignoring history. You're ignoring the, the, the eradication of some of the world's worst, worst diseases, polio. I mean, I could go on and on, smallpox. I could go on and on, all of the diseases. Our, our lives are so much better today. Our children are so much safer today than they were thanks to vaccines. You don't like vaccines, okay. But you cannot, please, lobby or in any way be opposed to having vaccines for those people who are in the greatest risk. For God's sake. Uh, I'm, I, am, I am absolutely gobsmacked, surprised that so many Canadians are prepared to accept this second, third, fourth class treatment. I, I just, I want to go through this again. The United States, now you can poo poo and say, oh, they'll never do it. Well, maybe they won't, but they have plans to do it. 10 million people every single week. If we, ladies and gentlemen, if we had the same kind of planning, I mean, why would it be any difference in Canada? People are the same. Our cities are the same, structured the same. We have the same facilities here. Why would we not be able to mimic that, the, what they're doing in the United States? What would prevent us from doing exactly what they're doing in the States? Can anybody explain that to me? So if we were to inoculate 10 million people a week, as they say they're going to do in the United States, we would have the entire population inoculated by about the middle of January. Okay, let's, let's, let's say we only do 8 million. By the end of January, then. But by the end of January, we probably won't have anybody inoculated. We may not have anybody inoculated by the end of February. How, how, how can anybody accept this? I don't understand it. If you have any thoughts on this, any additional thoughts, if you're prepared to accept this, or if you think this is unacceptable, I would really appreciate an email or a text, a phone call, anything. This, I, I can't be, I know that I'm not the only one who just is shaking their head at this incompetence. Now, I've got to get on to um, another story here. Oh, my God. You know, I admit, it's very hard not to feel sympathy for Adam Skelly. Hauled off in handcuffs after refusing to shut down his barbecue restaurant in Etobicoke. I, he's a very sympathetic character. There's no question about it. You know, here is a guy, apparently, standing up to the establishment, standing up to the man. We've got a phone call here. Let's, uh, let's, let's take this first call. Yes, uh, where are you calling from, please? Who we got? San Diego, California, uh, Lowell. And uh, oh, my God. You know, I don't I'm, understand I'm why Americans are calling me, but Canadians aren't. What the hell's the matter with Canadian. Canadians? We don't we don't care I am about Canadian. This. I I know, I, I but you're Canadian. in the states. You're living in the states. Well, well yeah, yeah, Go ahead. It's so frustrating. Go ahead, sir. Please. 
No, we lost him. <laughs> we lost him. I'm sorry. Don't know where. Okay. Don't know where he went. He was there. Sorry, Lowell. I, look, if 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 there's is there a Canadian in Canada that has any concerns about this? The number to call is 613-413-2217. If you don't call, I can only assume that it's okay with you. All right, let's get on to the other topic. This, this apparently everybody, everybody wants to talk about Brian Skelly. They don't. I guess people don't care about whether they're not going to get a vaccine or to return to normal. I don't know. So it, as I say, it's very hard not to feel sympathy for this guy. One man against the. Uh, the man, one one guy against the man, against the machine, et cetera, et cetera. I, I mean, I have to confess, a couple of weeks ago, I was urging local restaurants here in Ottawa to defy the lobby when we learned that only about 2% of all COVID infections were occurring in restaurants. It's easy for me to say it. I shouldn't probably have said it. But I was, I was concerned. I was upset. So were many other people. But there is a problem with this, okay? It's all very well to feel sympathy and empathy, feel sorry for the guy. And a lot of people are. He's, he's now apparently there's well over $100,000 donated on a GoFundMe campaign for this guy. So he's, he's doing all right. I don't think we should <laughs> shed too many tears. Let's try a phone call again. Where's, where's this call coming from? Go ahead, please. Oh, we got uh, John. JF, where are you now? Uh, I don't know. I, I I give up. He's he's calling from the United States. Apparently, the, the, they can get inoculations there. They can't get phones that work. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Canadians don't care. I I what am I supposed to do? It's 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 I don't know. Very frustrating. Um, but the, here's the problem with the situation like Brian Skelly. Okay, I mean, if he is allowed to open his restaurant and thumb his nose at the law. Very clearly, so is every other restaurant and bar in the entire province. It seems like a pretty heavy-handed police operation to send in what looks like a SWAT team to arrest one little guy. I admit that. But if a very dramatic and very definite action is not taken, God knows where this will lead. I mean, if, if this guy is allowed, to, as I say, to open his restaurant, then you can imagine all of the other restaurant owners in the uh, province Say, holy smokes, I've been following the law. I've virtually bankrupted myself, did everything they asked me to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, they, they, they're, and you know, they would have closed me down, but they're letting this guy stay open. Can, can you see the problem there? And then there's the problem with people who are not in the restaurant trade. If, in fact, it looks like the, the government, the police are not going to enforce the law, when it comes to restaurant owners, then maybe they're not going to enforce the law as it applies to other things, masking, et cetera, et cetera. Already there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of people who are ready to vote, revolt out there, and I understand that. It's, it's very, very frustrating, very tiresome. You know what? I, someone says they're going to phone again. If I don't get a phone call this time, I'm just going to open my wrist. All right, let's, let's try the phone. Let's try it. Is somebody there on the phone? Hey, Lola no. Coward. Go ahead, please. Hey, so, you know, with Trudeau and the uh, vaccines, what what can we do now? This guy is a total screw-up. The, the whole liberal government screw-up. But we're, like, this is where we're at. Canada's going to be last at getting the vaccines. Everybody else is going to be way ahead of us. Their, their borders are going to be open. Trade's going to be... You know, flowing all restaurants, stores are going to be everything's going to go back to normal. But Canada is going to be at shut in, in shutdown mode still. What can we do as citizens to put a stop to this? Well, number one, I guess you can be concerned, which you are. Thank you. But uh, very clearly, it would appear that a lot of Canadians are not all that concerned. They, I mean, the the reaction, not just in this program but elsewhere, is. Far more people were concerned about Brian Skelly. It's much easier to discuss that guy than it is the overriding problem. I mean, let's just talk about Brian Skelly. If, in fact, we, we had 10 million or even close to 10 million inoculations every single week, well, Brian Skelly could be open by the, you know, probably by Christmas because there would be enough people inoculated, it would be safe. So if you really care about Brian Skelly, then for God's sake, Let's urge the government to speed up the damn vaccinations. I, that's, you know, that's I, I, care about, the... I care about Brian Scully. I care about you. <laughs> I care about every other Canadian citizen. 
I'm born and raised in this great country. But right now, you know, sometimes I, I look and go, uh, you know, I, I'm really ashamed at what our government's doing. And I just want to know as a concerned citizen, like, I just can't call up the prime minister and say, hey, schmuck, get off your ass and get the vaccines going. Well, you can right? phone You're your local MP. Everything. You can phone your local MP. I've done that. I mean, I, yeah, I just chewed out yeah. my local MP here. I mean, I just, it's totally unacceptable. They won't give us any answers. Uh, you know, you're trying to take credit for the fact that we're going to get some vaccinations by the end of March. In the meantime, almost every American citizen is going to be vaccinated. I mean, how yeah, can this be acceptable to anybody? Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. And I, you're right. You know what? I would be frustrated right now, just as you are, that why aren't more Canadians up in arms about this? I mean, our, our, our whole, everything is going to be shut down in Canada. We're going to be sitting by ourselves going, wow, what, it, what, what would it be nice, like, like to, to have like yep. an open store or something? Like, it's absolutely ludicrous that nobody is concerned about this. Only few well, pe- people some are, people are, 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 but are speaking. I, I, I was talking with Rob Snow, for example, uh, on 1310. I, I did a little stick with him this morning. And yesterday, all people wanted to talk about was Brian Skelly. Okay, I understand. It's 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 easy, you know. Here's the the one guy, and you, he's, as I say, a very sympathetic character. But I just want to point out, if you really cared about Brian Skelly, you'd care about all the other restaurant and bar owners and everybody else in business in this province, and do everything in your power to make sure that they can reopen. And the only way that's going to happen is if we get vaccinated. <sighs> Absolutely. It, and you know what, Lo? As soon as I hang up from you right now, I'm calling the local MP. And Good for uh, you. my writing, and I want to. Uh, I want some action. Bloody well, time these buggers sat there. They're making what two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to sit on their damn collective fat asses and do sweet bugger all. They've left this damn thing right. way, way too. They, you know that they are still now. Trudeau is still now, just in the last couple of days, signing a couple more contracts for vaccines. Yeah, ay- ridiculous. Ay- 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 Thank you for the call. You know, God bless. Thanks. We got somebody that cares. God, you know what? That is that's that's cool, man. Cool. I got to take a break here, folks. I got to cool down myself talking about cool. <laughs> uh, Shields. I've got to get a, a good word in. God bless Shields. Uh, here, here is a great, a great family business, in business since 1946, the same family. But what you really care about is can I go to go, get a good deal on an appliance at Shields? You're darn right. Check out their website, okay? Shields, S-C-H-E-E-L-S dot C-A. There you will see all of the product that's there uh, in color and the price and the government rebates that are available. It's all there. Shields.ca. Local business, support them, folks. All right, we have an email here. John, please. We've got a bunch of Facebook messages, emails, and text messages to get to. We'll begin with Facebook. So Steve says, I don't think Trudeau will be able to answer when the vaccine will arrive or how much. This happens when we are a vaccine buyer rather than a manufacturer. Bart says, unreal how people are just letting this slide. Better for the other countries to work out any vaccine kinks. Some of them are saying, unreal. Uh, Peter says, Americans get busy and get things done. Canadians are, well, we don't complain, just go along. That's the Canadian way. Scream bloody hell and rattle the cage with MPs. Stand up and fight and demand the damn needles. Stupid Trudeau is too busy planning his socks for Christmas dinner. You know, uh, let me let me just address that. Mm-hmm. Actually, R- Rob Snow had a very astute comment this morning about this very thing. He said, you know what? If you were to ask Trudeau his plans to reach zero emissions of CO2 by 2050, he would be able to give you a very detailed plan. He would talk about uh, this, that, electrical vehicles, etc. He would go through it and give you a very detailed plan and how he plans to reach zero emissions by 2050. But if you were to ask him how he plans to get vaccines to Canadians next week, he wouldn't be able to do it. There, that, that, and I've talked about this before, John, and that is that, that this government is so wrapped up, so engrossed, so energized with green energy that all of the other problems, including debt, et cetera, et cetera, are going by the wayside. All he seems to care about is coming to zero emissions, green energy. Let's get windmills and solar panels to work. And, uh, oh, yeah, vaccine, vaccine, what the hell is that? 
Any more emails, sir? Uh, we've got some Facebook messages. We've got some texts. Which do you do? You right, have a, do you, anything you got, man. Uh, here comes a text just moments ago. Lol, the liberal government doesn't care when the rest of us get the vaccine because Trudeau, the PMO, and the Liberal Party will have enough vaccines sent here in December by their political and business connections in the U.S. Okay, good point. Uh, we've got a phone call coming in, so I'll let you uh, carry on <laughs> while I take the call. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, that's it. Great risk of taking a phone call. Well, let's uh, let's let's give it a try. You got someone there, John? Oh, you want to just go cold to the call? Hang on a second here. Yeah, I'll do sure. That. Yep. Hang on. Whatever. Let's gotta find my call. plug. Well, here we go. Hang on. Sorry. There we go. Go ahead. All right. Are we plugged in? Yes. Go ahead, please, on the phone. Good afternoon, Lowell. It's Jace. Yes, Jace. I've got a question though. Sure. About the vaccines. Yes. Like. We've rushed through this entire process really, really fast. Not really. Uh, I've been studying you know? this, and I'm glad you raised it, and then I'll give you lots of time. The fact is that we, we have been developing COVID vaccinations since 2013. For seven years, we've been working on, uh, on COVID vaccinations. So th- this, this is why we were able to do it so quickly this time. Okay. I did. I, I was totally unaware of that because, yeah. from from the layman's perspective, I mean, this thing came out last December. We shut down in March. Uh, business has gone to hell, except unless you happen to have the last name Weston or something. And all of a sudden, they've got this vaccine less than a year later, and my mind suddenly flips back to the mid '60s when thalidomide came out, and it wasn't properly well. Wait a minute, vetted, hold on, hold on, and we had a huge on. problem. Hold on, just a minute. Thalidomide wasn't a vaccine, sir. Thalidomide was no, a no, drug for morning. Excuse me. Uh, thalidomide was a drug for morning sickness. Big, big difference between drugs and vaccines. Uh, I mean, COVID is a virus. We, we've we been experimenting and working with virus. Uh, I mean, the flu is a virus. So we, we, we've had lots of experience with vaccines for viruses, sir. But the COVID, the COVID, they tell us, they have been working on various COVID vaccines since 2013 for seven years. But, you know, the fact is that this has been tested extensively in many different countries. Over 30,000 uh, uh, vaccines apparently have been applied. From what we understand, what they are saying is that there is no side effects. It works. It's very effective, 90% effective, which is more effective than the, than the flu vaccine. One of the, one of the advantages we've got, to, I'm glad you raised this. It's a good question. One of the advantages of, of creating this vaccine, for some reason or other, the COVID virus is not mutating. As you know, the flu virus mutates. So every year we've got to sort of develop a new vaccine for it. But apparently, from what they have found, is that the COVID virus is not mutating. It's essentially the same now as it was 10, 11 months ago. So this really helps when we're developing a vaccine. I'm absolutely convinced with all of the checks and balances, all these different countries, and university, I mean, the, the one being produced by uh, by, Zeneca, by AstraZeneca uh, is developed at Oxford University. Uh, I, I, you, you know what? You, you, you got you to gotta trust somebody. Yeah, and we need to do it soon. Oh, you're, can, you, <laughs> can you believe that, that they say the America, whether you, whether you, listen, whether you agree with the vaccine or not, you got to say, look, how come the Americans can do 10 million or close to it a week? And like by the time they've got almost all of their population, 300 and some odd million vaccinated, we may not, not, not even have started yet. Oh, that's, God. That's you know a, what? Thank, that thank that you. You raised, some good, you raised some good issues. I know that a lot of people are concerned about that, and, and I'm glad that you raised it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're running a little short of time. John, I'm here. I want to... I want to briefly address a call yesterday, which I finally hung up on. The woman caller, some of you will recall, began talking about uh, what's a false story, making the rounds about Trudeau building special isolation camps for COVID sufferers. Some call them concentration camps. There's a major thing on Facebook and on YouTube right now about these so-called concentration camps. It is absolutely false. What, What is happening and has happened for several months is that when newcomers arrive in Canada, some 300,000 of them, they are supposed to isolate, self-isolate for 14 days. If somebody comes here and they have no place, in other words, they don't have relatives, etc., then the government may put them up in a hotel someplace and monitor them. In fact, all of the people 
who arrive and are in self-isolation are supposed to be monitored somehow or other by the government. But that's a long way from building concentration camps. But one, I want to explain why I can't allow that on this program. I refuse to allow this program to be taken over by what I would call the fringe element, by people who soak up all of these false stories, uh, you know, conspiracy theories and all the rest of it. I, 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 I'm not going to get caught up in that. There are other programs that cater to that. That's fine. That, that, that's fine. So there's free speech for everybody. On this program, I want to deal with reality and as close as we can to the truth. You can't always find the truth, but if I know something is wrong, I'm not going to allow it. And the other, another reason is, is that um, we're raising some very, I, I believe, serious and important questions for all Canadians. Uh, you know, the, the fate of the country, et cetera, is, is at stake here, really. So I, th I think this is a very important issue. But when people will phone up with the other stories like this, what it does is, first of all, it distracts. It distracts from the real problem. Just as the, uh, uh, just as the uh, uh, Adam Skelly story is detracting from the real problem. While, while Trudeau is getting away with, uh, with all of the, the vaccine chaos, uh, most people are concentrated on this guy down in Etobicoke. It's a distraction. And so when you phone a, a show like this and you, you raise another issue, it's a distraction that I don't think is helpful to anybody. And th none of that, and those of you who, who um, pay attention to Facebook, you will see very often someone, myself or someone else, will introduce a really serious topic. Very soon someone will raise something else, some crazy thing, and before you know it, everybody has abandoned the original topic, and they're all responding to this other guy. I don't want that to happen. I, I only have half an hour. I think that we, we should have a forum here to discuss serious problems that affect all Canadians. Um, now, John, mm. I want to I bring you in here because, God bless you, you've done some, some research on how some of these stories, these false stories, get started and the reason. You and I have talked about this, and I was very puzzled, but you actually did some research. What happens here? Uh, follow the money, right? Yep. Exactly follow the money. So, you know, I, I just... I messaged you this morning about this because it was just a classic example of exactly, as you say, what we were talking about. How easy it is for someone to start a website and make it look like a legitimate website, you know, with a logo and a news feed. Um, so this was a, you know, just an average person, a friend of mine on Facebook posted some article uh, about, you know, the classic Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer movie that airs at Christmas every single year. We've all watched it since our childhood. Um, and the story or the headline was, uh, activists want to ban the Rudolph movie from Christmas this year. Well, of course, people see that headline and the comment section is just filled with, what is this world coming to? Blah, 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 blah. So I clicked on it. It comes from a website called amw.com. Sounds pretty legit, right? amw.com. Well, I checked on amw.com. It stands for American Web Media. And when I search for information on that site, media bias facts, fact check .com, pardon me, media bias fact check .com, so it's a website that checks media bias, had this to say about them. First off, questionable source. Founded in 2013, American Web Media, or AMW.com, is a clickbait website that repackages news stories with the intent of clicks and social media sharing. Although the website does not disclose who the owner is at the bottom of each page, it lists a copyright to Internet ROI, Inc., which is a Massachusetts-based Internet marketing company founded by Chris Cole in 2005. The AMW website generates revenue through advertising. Let's post so clickbait. This, 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 that's, that, see, that's, that's key. Let's just cover that. So what you're saying is, is that these, these sites are deliberately posted to excite people, make people angry, mm -hmm. because they know that they'll get reaction. Every time so you they click, cl I they, cash in. So they click on it. The more clicks, the more money that can be raised, right? Yep, because the banner gets more exposure to more and more viewers. I didn't know what clickbait meant. Now I understand. It's bait, clickbait it's, it's, is a it's, false story. Drawing you in to click on my site, because I've got Google banners that pay me for every single person that sees them. That's th that. That's what happens, folks. So a lot of this stuff that you're reading and seeing wherever it is, Facebook, YouTube, etc., that that is outrageous, and you see a lot of it. It's intended to be outrageous in order to prompt you to click on 
in anger or, or, or in belief, because every time you click onto it, it's more money in the pocket of the son of a bitch that created it in the first place. And the fascinating, you, part, the fascinating part of my research on that, Lowell, is does not disclose who the owner is. Enough said. Makes, Enough makes said. Money. It's all about money, folks. That there, there's, there's the reason. A lot of the, a lot of these sites exist for no other reason than then to get you to click on, because every time you click on, you're putting money in some crook's pocket. I just, before I go, I just want to thank the two callers who managed to get through. Thank you very much, and uh, all of the emailers and texters. I appreciate that. I just want to say once again, folks, while we sit here in Canada twiddling our thumbs, waiting for a vaccine. The United States says it will vaccinate 10 million people every week. If we did the same, we would have more or less a normal Christmas, honest to God. Thank you all. We'll be back come Monday. Thanks for tuning in to the new No Holds Barred show on BlastTheRadio.com. And get the show on demand with the Lowell Green Podcast. Available on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and more.